Hey guys, today is October 6, 2019, and um, I think a lot of you guys have been asking for a while now, and I haven't really thought about it seriously, but today I'm just going to tell you guys how I take care of my Neos, and I'll mention some of the things, some of the rationale why I do certain things, because it's specific to my growing conditions and environment, so, you know, you sort of have to extrapolate it to see if it's appropriate for your environment if you want to sort of follow these um, culture things that I do. Okay, um, so today we are working with this one. This is Suraga, Suraga Fukuren. Um, as you can see, there are um, a lot of d damages along here. So, uh, like I said in the past update, I've been remossing. We're starting to remoss all of my uh, nails for the season. And this is uh, just is, is a little demonstration of what I do in my uh, remossing. Um, I'll go into a little bit f uh, more detail uh, versus the last video that I made about remossing. So hopefully that sort of gives you a better picture of my technique. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is try to pry this out. Um, first, I usually check the bottom to see if there's any roots have been growing during the season that has attached itself to the uh, surface of the inside of the pot. So I'm going to try to wiggle it out, hopefully not to damage any roots. Um, this one is in unfortunately pretty bad condition. So um, the next thing that I'm going to do is try to remove all the old moss and just throw it in here in this um, bucket. That um, I'm going to throw all the old moss in the um, compost heap that I have in the backyard. So this is the ones that are kind of not doing well. It's pretty pretty badly infested with uh, scale. So I have to clean this up, and more than likely I have to soak this in a, a weak bleach solution to kill off anything, and then possibly spray it later. But yeah, we're just gonna unmoss this, remove all the old moss, and try not to break any old roots that has developed there. As in the last video, I said that um, I used sort of do a modified method of the traditional way of potting up or mossing up the needles. I use an inverted netted pot to sort of give it a framework um, to put all the moss strands on it. But I reuse this um, inverted netted pot uh, for the remossing as well. So just taking a look at the this particular needle, um, I see a lot of dead roots, a lot of dry dead roots, and. Um, don't think I'll cut off too many of the dead roots just because I need something to hold on to um, the moss mound so I can wrap all the moss uh, to sort of help anchor the needle to the netted pot. So um, yeah, I'm not going to take out too many. I realize that you probably need to but I need something if I don't have a lot of roots to sort of anchor it the um, moss mound. Uh, like I said, this one is pretty, I don't know if the camera uh, will show up really well, but it's pretty heavily infested with scale, so um, after cutting off these uh, brown leaves, which I'm not sure what the cause is, but I'm going to take these off. This one, is, I think this fan is probably dead. So I'm going to go um, soak this in my bleach solution just to kill off all the um, uh, scales and um, I'll come back and clean up anything that's left over. Alright, so we're back inside and here we have a tub of water and I just want to show you guys how I clean up my uh, other pots every year after the remossing is done. So to this tub of water, I'm going to add about a cup of bleach. Um, in metric, I think maybe 500 cc's or something like that. I'm not sure. 
But anyways, I'm just gonna do that and show you guys. I'm just kind of eyeballing it there. You don't have to be super exact with this. Um, all you really need is just a weak bleaching solution. So, this is the pot that we uh, unmoss my Suruga Fukurin. So, I'm just going to place it in there and let it soak, um, usually overnight. Um, that particular pot didn't have that much algae on it, so um, it shouldn't need that much time. But as a process, I sort of um, do everything the same. But I do have uh, a couple other pots that um, has a little bit of algae in it. And um, like I said, I'll leave this overnight in there. And tomorrow morning, uh, or late in the day, whenever I get them out um, for cleaning. So I'm gonna do that as well for this one. All right, so this is our Suruga Fukurin that's pretty heavily infested with uh, scales. Um, I'm gonna soak this uh, the whole bit in the bleach solution for about 30 minutes or so. Then I'll come back to retrieve it to scrub everything out to make sure that's all good and clean. All right. While we wait for my Neo to soak in the bleach solution, let's do a little unboxing on uh, some supplies I've ordered from Japan. This box came from a vendor, uh, his name is Neji Orchids. I've mentioned in the past that I've ordered uh, Neo stands from him. Um, I've gotten a couple of pots, a Hoya and another stand. Uh, it's the one to replace the one that's sort of broken. So let's see. Um, all the stuff that I've ordered. Okay, so here is the plant stand. This is how it comes to me from the vendor. Um, I order the two tier ones and um, you just have to put that together. All right, and here is the stand assembled. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, now let's go over to the other two things that I've purchased, which are uh, this ramen pot and a Hoya. It's a nice little ribbon too, which is really pretty. These will go very nicely with the pots that I've purchased, I think. All right, let me put this aside. So I bet the pots are in here. Let me take this out. the color on this one. I'm really into that because I have quite a few bean leaf varieties that will go into this one pretty well, I think. I think this might be a little bit more substantial than the last one. And I don't know uh, who's the maker of this these pots. Um, I think I need to go and ask um, the the vendor to see if they remember who who made it. But yeah, this one is also really really nice. 
and in a color that I don't have in my current collection. But this one is actually bigger than I thought when I placed the order. So kind of the same thing, lace patterns, uh, very delicate, very, um, very pretty. So yeah, these are my two pots. Um, I also received this, um, which is something I did not order. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I imagine this is for hanging um, a neopod or something. It has a hook here and a little ring um, thing to add, to place the pot in. So um, I'm going to have to email um, the vendor to see what this is about. But if this was a sample for free, um, that was really nice of them. So. This particular one has quite a bit of scales on the root itself, which um, I have not yet encountered on my nails, so it's a little bit concerning. I'm cutting off as much as I can. Okay, I think that's all I can do for now. Um, we'll have to go back and clean it some more later on, but um, we'll just move forward to the remossing part. Alright, so I got my... Um, Net a pot that's unbearded, and I'll place it on top, and then try to secure it um, using the roots. That's why I said um, I kind of need, if, if it doesn't have any viable roots, I kind of need to have some dead roots on there so I can have something to hold onto the netted pot so I can start wrapping the, um, the nail onto the netted pot. So what I like to do initially is just to find a very, very long strand of moss and wrap it gently over itself. So then it sort of holds itself just by the mere friction of it. So that's why I like kind of use um, uh, moss that's been wetted so you can, um, so you can hold itself better. And then what I'll do is I continue on wrapping the um, the neo and then with any ends um, you just kind of kind of hold it um, in place with uh, one of your fingers and then with um, the other hand you're gonna pick up another strand and then lay on top of the end of that so then it'll stay in place and then you can just, just kind of keep doing that over and over until you everything is covered up so part of this is also about aesthetics as well so I kind of want to cover all the netted pot as much as possible. Um, that includes the top part here. It might be helpful if you don't have a lot of long strands. It's just kind of clump them up together and then uh, wrapping it, it so then they sort of hold on to each other so you can get a better, uh, a longer strand, a stronger strand. See these, these pot like this? I like to hold it with a finger and then um, using the, the moth that you're wrapping, overlap it so that it'll stay in place. Now, it's super helpful if you have 5A moths, which was what I have here. But um, uh, if you don't get, have that, um, I do have a link to the supplier that supplied me with these. Um, I order it directly from Japan, um, like a huge bale of it, just to hold me over for several seasons, I think. But um, if you can't get this particular one um, on eBay, I do see that Best Grow supplies uh, very long strand uh, moss they can purchase in small quantities. It is a little bit more um, expensive that way, but um, this is a, it, you can't do that if, you, if your collection is smaller. So we'll keep doing this um, until everything is sort of covered. And then. Um, I'm gonna go grab the um, the pot that it's gonna be placed in as soon as I finish wrapping everything. If you're more efficient than I am, I think it's best if you sort of like organize yourself with um, various length of uh, uh, moss. But I haven't had time for to do that, so I just kind of soak everything in one tub and then pick out as I need it. Okay. You do want to wrap enough moss so then it sort of stands or fits into the pot that you're using. Um, for me, I have the traditional Japanese pot. Um, 
So I do want to make sure that it's big enough so the note it doesn't fall right into the pot itself. So um, I'm just going to keep going until I sort of eyeball it um, and see if it will fit in there on its own on top of the pot. It's kind of frustrating that you have a really long strand and you're in the middle of wrapping it around and then it suddenly breaks. Um, not really anything you can do to prevent that, but to be gentle, I guess. But I kind of get want to get this done quickly because I have so many to do this. Okay. So I think that's pretty good enough. Um, as in the previous videos that I've made, um, every time that um, I wrap it in a way so that the ends will f eventually meet somewhere in the bottom. So of course this one is going to be, this section is going to be on top of the pot. So if you have the ends meeting there, um, you can sort of secure it with the weight of the, the whole thing on top of the pot. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, I have a clean pot here, so I'm going to put my Suraga Fukurin on top of there, and it's big enough so it doesn't slip all the way in. So what I'm going to do, so what I'm going to do next is all these loose ends at the bottom of the mound. I'm going to tuck it in, and sort of using um, the friction to keep it in place. Um, this one could use a little bit more moss, more more um, mass, so then it doesn't fall too far in. But um, I've said earlier that part of this is um, also about aesthetics. So for me right now, it doesn't look very good. Um, I want a clean, um, even mound without too many many of these little moss ends sticking out. So. Um, I do have a solution for this. Um, this is what I like to do at the very end of the uh, mossing process. Alright, so I'm going to place it on the, the flat surface. And anywhere that I see that doesn't have a very even distribution of moss strands, I'm going to take um, a couple of um, sort of medium sized strands and I'm going to place it where it needs to be filled in. And then using the ends of the moss strands, and going to tuck it in into the sides, so then it'll stay in place. And we're going to go around all the way around until everything is nice and even and round. Um, you don't really need to use super long ones. Um, that I usually reserve to for the first initial wraps, so then it'll stay in place better. But um, for this one, I'm just going to use, try to use all the medium strands to do this to make it more even around and for these shiny strands I'm going to use my forceps to tuck it in there is quite a bit of space between the moss and the pot so it's kind of hard to tuck things in um, why you need to have a, a big size of a moss ball in order to place it in correctly. So all this needs right now is just more medium strand moss and just keep you know adding on on until you have enough all the way around. And you sort of keep doing this until, um, I guess it's kind of up to you, until you're kind of happy of how it looks. It's very subjective, so I can't really tell you exactly what you need to do. Um, you just started to develop a taste for what it should look like. Alright, so there it is, the final product. It's probably not my best work, but it's probably good enough for now. Um, like I said, this one will probably require another cleaning, so I'm not too keen on getting it so perfect and um, I do want to showcase the uh, how the moss uh, wraps 
um, as you can see, or maybe we can't, I'm not really sure, but um, when we use the medium strands like uh, crisscrossing each other like this, I, th I think it looks um, nicer that way. So um, that's why I use that technique. But like I said, it's, it's kind of up to you how you want it to look like. It's, it's purely on preference, preferences and aesthetics. So um, like I said, I can't tell you exactly what you need to do. You just have to develop a taste for it. So um, I like my moss mount to be pretty even uh, from all angles. So um, that's what I try to achieve uh, in all of my mossing. But this is just for growing, um, not purely for aesthetics. If I were to show this off at a show or something, I'd probably spend more time getting everything to look exactly um, nice and even all the way around. But um, I'm not. And so. Uh, this is probably good enough. And here's a look of all the neos that's been remossed. This is not all of it. There are some of the ones that are in the traditional orchid pots over here. And also over here. But yeah, it took quite a while. Actually, I finished last weekend, but I didn't really have enough time to film and um, earlier in the week it was torrential raining it's been raining for two days and it's starting to break up right now so i was going to include this for completeness but here they are it's currently fall weather here so it's kind of permissible for me to leave the neos uh, above the deck so this is what i've been doing for the past two weeks and um, they're they're doing well you're getting more sun, enough for them right now. Um, the way that the sun um, sort of goes over them um, gives them about maybe four hours of direct sunlight at most. And um, we'll talk about the cultures of how I keep them so that you can see how I, I grow them. With regards to the weather conditions where I live, I live in zone 8A, which means the average temperatures get as low as negative 10 degrees Celsius or around 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit, and as hot as 30 to 32 degrees Celsius in the summer or around the low 90s in Fahrenheit. My neos tend to bloom towards the late spring as temperatures approach the high 20 degrees Celsius or around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I get two distinct growing seasons, one in early spring and again in late fall. I think naturally they only grow once a year, but because I keep mine inside under lights in the colder seasons, I get another flush of growth. Once the neos come indoors, the temperature that they experience is a little bit more stable. As you can see here from my phone, uh, the temperature ranges from 74 to 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, I think that's it for now because I think the video is quite long already. Uh, this will wrap up part one, and when we come back, I'll talk about other aspects of my culture, including things like water quality and fertilizing regimen. Alright, well, thank you for tuning in as always. Um, see you next time. Bye.